Hey, how are you doing? This is Craig Beck and welcome in to this episode where I want to talk about moderation. Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if we could just drink in moderation, like everyone else appears to be able to do? A couple of drinks and just leave it at that. Wouldn't that be beautiful? No, it wouldn't, and I'll tell you why in this video. Uh, also, I just want to remind you that my Quit Drinking Bootcamp is on the road, uh, but I'm not doing many this year, so if you want to come, London is one week away now. I'm probably only going to do two dates in the UK in the whole of 2020. Don't put this off. Come to this one before COVID-19 kills us all. And then we've got New York in April. That may be the only one I do the whole year in the United States. So if you want to come, go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com, reserve your place and have an amazing day with me learning how to deal with problem drinking. Moderation. And the reason I'm making this is because uh, there is a point in my online course where I ask the person who's doing the course to make a decision. I say to them, what do you want? Do you want to quit drinking completely? Do you want to carry on as you were or do you want to drink in moderation? And 99% of people understand the process and they say, I get it. I don't want this poison in my life anymore. But 1% say, mm, I've heard what you have to say, Craig, and I'm still thinking moderation is the way forward. It would kind of feel nice to be able to go and socialize and have a few drinks and just leave it at that. And indeed, if you speak to my father, he will tell you that the secret to success in life, the secret to a healthy life, is moderation, son. Everything in moderation. You know, that would be lovely if it wasn't just complete horseshit, but it is. <laughs> because it's, it sounds logical, doesn't it? It sounds like, uh, you know, it makes sense. Everything in moderation. Yeah, okay, a bit of everything in a small amount, yeah? Bit of murder in a small amount, a bit of rape in a small amount is all right, a bit of poison in a small amount is all right, everything in moderation. No, not everything in moderation. Some things just, no. Some things, no amount is good. You can't have a blanket statement like everything in moderation. Why would you want that? Because if, that, if that's true, then Surely we can all have a little bit of heroin. Not going to do any harm, is it? Because everything in moderation. It's nonsense. It's a platitude. And it's the sort of thing that, you know, problem drinkers use as, as though it's fact, as though that sentence is the end of the debate. Everything in moderation. I've only had one, so therefore I'm okay. Now, when people email me and say, Craig, look, I've heard what you have to say but I still want to drink in moderation. There's a problem with that statement from, from the get-go because the implication is that that's an option. You know, problem drinkers have already, by the time a problem drinker gets to me, they've already demonstrated hundreds and hundreds of times that they can't drink in moderation. It's impossible. It's, you know, and coming to me saying, Craig, I've, I've heard what you say, but I insist, I insist, I want to drink in moderation. It's just, it would be like me coming to you saying, I insist that I play professional football for uh, the 49ers. It doesn't matter how much I bang my fists on the table and demand it and have a tantrum. I'm a 45-year-old man that lives 6,000 miles away from the 49ers and I don't like American football. There's no chance. It's impossible. That is never going to happen. And so when someone who's a problem drinker comes to me and says, Craig, how do I drink in moderation? I want to slap them and go, you can't, you can't. Because if you could, you would have. That moment in your life where you could has gone. Because, you know, when, when, you, when you make the decision to have your first ever alcoholic drink, it's a valve decision. You, the course of your life changes from that point and there's no way back. It's, it's like that movie, Sliding Doors. It's a sliding doors moment. Everything changes from that point on. You can never go back to that, that point again. 
And you know, when you first started drinking, it wasn't a big deal. You weren't addicted. You weren't a problem drinker. You could moderate. You could drink socially. But the problem is you've used alcohol more and more and more and more and more over the years that you've developed a tolerance to it now. So if you have one drink, it's not really going to ring your bells like, like you want it to. It's not going to have the impact that you see it having on other people. Those people who are not problem drinkers, they're having one or two drinks and the taste is okay, but they're doing it mainly to be social and they feel a little bit tipsy after one drink. That's not happening for you anymore. And so your body has adjusted to this new world where alcohol has to be consumed in larger quantities, which means moderation really isn't something you can do anymore. And you might think, well, Craig, maybe if I leave it long enough, I'll be able to go back. No, because it's a bit like, you know, if, if I was blowing a trumpet into your ear, eventually your hearing would be damaged to the point that I would have to blow the trumpet louder and louder and louder before you'd be able to hear it. And once that's happened to you, it doesn't matter how long you leave it, you now need the volume to be at a certain level before you can hear the trumpet because you've done damage. And this is what alcohol has done to you. So the first point I want to make about this is if you are a problem drinker, still clinging on to the notion that you can return to being a drinker of poison in moderation, you are deluding yourself and you are in denial. This is impossible for you. And if that fact upsets you or depresses you, then it brings me on to my second point. Because if you're upset or depressed, because I'm telling you that you can't drink in moderation, then you haven't really understood what I'm saying to you. This is, there are no benefits to alcohol. I don't mean there are, there are not many. I mean there are none, zero, zip, nada, not a single benefit to drinking diluted poison. And so, I mean, that's what it is. You know, alcohol in its pure form is a registered poison. Alcohol sales are going crazy at the moment. In fact, I bought, I bought about four liters of alcohol uh, two days ago to wash my hands with because of this coronavirus thing. It's very good at killing life. You know, at a cellular level, if you get some liver cells, put them in a Petri dish, drop some alcohol in, watch what happens to them under a microscope. All the moisture inside the cell is sucked out. The walls of the cell cave in on itself. It implodes. It's like thermonuclear war in a Petri dish. And if you think that that is not happening inside your body because you mixed it with a bit of cranberry juice, you're insane. You are drinking poison. Now, when you come to me and you say, Craig, but can't I drink poison in moderation? This is how I hear it when you say, can I have a vodka and tonic every now and again? I hear you saying, Craig, but can't I just have a little bit of poison? <laughs> I just, it, to me, it's like, why would you want to do that? And think about it. If someone came to you, change the drug is what I always say to people. If you want to hear the reality, if you want to separate what you're thinking which is, is an illusion from the reality, change the drug. If you change the drug, it will instantly highlight the reality of what you're saying. Imagine that you've been addicted to heroin for 10 years and you finally quit, you've got clean and you've gone three months without taking any heroin and you're feeling better, the life is coming back into you, your finances are sorting out, your relations are sorting out and you come up to me and you say, Craig, everything's going great is, do you think I could just have a little bit of heroin? What do you want me to say to that? You know, if you came up to me and said, I think I've got this nailed now. I, I think I can probably have heroin on a Tuesday. What do you think? It's insane. It's, a, you can't do it. And B, why would you want to do that? So change the drug and you'll see the reality. 
And I know this is all, you know, this is all sanctimonious and I'm standing, you know, I'm sitting here on my ivory tower and I understand that you go to a party and you're sober and initially you look around and you see the world that you used to be in. And you, you look back with your rose-tinted glasses on and you, 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 you feel awkward and you feel out of place and you feel like you're missing out on the fun. I get that. And you see, you've got to dissect it a bit more than just the black and white of I used to do that and now I can't. Because if you do that, you're going to feel like you've lost something. And actually you haven't really. You've gained something. But one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they give up drinking poison is they don't change anything else about their life. Your whole world has been dictated by this drug for many, many years. Everything that you've labeled normal has not been designed by you, but it has been designed by the drug. You know, back when I was a drinker, I, I wouldn't go anywhere unless I could drink. If my wife and kids wanted to go and do something and I knew I couldn't get alcohol there, then I don't care. Either they went on their own or we changed the plans. I managed to persuade them to do something else where I knew I could drink. I was completely selfish because I was basically a puppet being controlled by the drug. And so when you stop drinking poison for fun, you have to make some other changes in your life. And you have to wake up to the reality of what is going on. Firstly, a lot of these things that you went to weren't fun in the first place. It's just that you couldn't be relaxed without alcohol. And getting there and being able to drink took away the pain you were feeling from the kick of the drug. Secondly, the people that you thought were fun, when you view them through sober eyes, you'll realize they're not really that fun. They're just a bit stupid. Because that's what alcohol does. Alcohol doesn't make fun, it makes stupidity. It reduces our brain capacity to the point where we're basically a chimpanzee. We find things that are not funny, very funny. Now, back in the day when you were drinking, you also had the brain capacity of a chimpanzee and you found that funny. And when you go with sober eyes, you go, oh, this dust doesn't feel fun anymore. Well, you know what? It never was. It's just you reduced your thinking ability to the point where it became amusing to you. And that's not something you should aspire to. <laughs> Nobody, no human being should be aspiring to turn themselves into a lesser being. What's the point of that? Also, you know, drinkers tend to think they have a lot of friends. They think they have this big social circle. When I was a drinker, I had 2,000 friends on Facebook. I wouldn't know 1,950 of them if I met them in the street today. Today, I, have so, I think I have 130 friends on Facebook. I maybe see five of them on a regular basis. But the, the reality is those people you label friends are nothing of the sort. They're just people who like to consume the same drug as you. And they're also people that like the safety and numbers element of consuming a drug in a social environment. You know, intrinsically, we all know drinking poison, even if it is diluted in Coca-Cola or orange juice, is, is not good for us. You know, somewhere at the back of our head, there is a bell ringing going, what are you doing? Why are you drinking poison? But we, we, you know, we need to shut that off because we, it's ruining our fun, isn't it? So one of the things that drinkers do is they go and sit with other drinkers. And they look around and they make the erroneous assumption, well, if everyone else is doing it, it must be okay. It's, it's nonsense. The fact that you're on your own or with 100 people, the, your odds of developing something serious or having something horrible happen to you are exactly the same. Makes no difference. It's like, you know, playing Russian roulette. You put a gun to your head and pull the trigger. The odds are the same if you do it on your own or if everyone in the room is doing it. There's no safety in numbers with alcohol. The odds are exactly the same. It is just an illusion of social proof. It's just another way we can lie to ourselves and say, well, hey, everyone else is doing it, so therefore it must be okay. 
And we have, all, we have lots of these little lies that we tell ourselves. We, have you ever said to yourself, hey, but at least I don't smoke? I used to say that to myself. Yeah, sure, I drink, but at least I don't smoke. That's really bad for you. Or at least I don't do the hard stuff. I only do alcohol. Don't do uh, heroin. I don't sniff glue. I don't do cocaine. This, this is, these are just statements designed to make us feel better about doing something really stupid. Some people will take harder drugs than you and nothing will happen to them. Some people will take lesser drugs than you and something horrible. It's, it's an irrelevance. What happens to other people has no bearing on what happens with you. The fact is, if you're coming to me and saying, Craig, I've heard what you have to say. I, I, I get it, but tell me how I drink in moderation. I'm going to say to you, you haven't got it and you need to go and look at your reasons to drink again. Tell me why you're drinking, because everyone has a reason. It's got to be giving you something. And whatever you say next is easily taken apart as nonsense. If you say to me, Craig, I need it to um, get to sleep at night. It's easy to d dissect that. Alcohol doesn't facilitate good quality sleep. That's nonsense, because if, if that were true, then you would see problem drinkers at work, wouldn't you? They'd be, they'd be the people bouncing around going, wow, I feel so good. Wow, what a night's sleep I had. Yay. You'd, you'd see them, you'd go, oh, problem drinker over there. But that's not true, is it? Problem drinkers have to drag themselves to work. They're like zombies. They're drinking coffee going, oh my God, I can't believe my, my head. You tell me that you're lonely and alcohol helps take the pain away. You know, I've just made a video about that. Alcohol creates loneliness. If you have a relationship with alcohol, that drug is going to insist you give it a lot of your time. And it doesn't want nosy people inspecting your behavior, so it will persuade you to take your drug on your own. It will induce more solitude than before you started. So don't tell me that alcohol helps with loneliness. Alcohol creates loneliness. And the list goes on and on. This is what we do at boot camp. I go around the room and say, why do you drink? Why do you drink? Why do you drink? Every single reason is an illusion. So this might not be what you came for. You might have put this video on to say, well, how do I drink in moderation? And I've just told you you can't. But I hope it, should, it, I hope it kind of resets your thinking a little bit. That if you are still thinking that, you have some work to do. You need to analyze your reasons for drink and then start to get serious about understanding how this drug is manipulating you. Because that is what is happening at the moment. It's hitting you with a stick and rewarding you with a carrot repeatedly to keep you in this loop. Thank you very much for watching today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like my YouTube channel, the podcast. And if you would like to join me today for a free quit drinking webinar where I will give you my best selling book, Alcohol Light Me Free, as a download, uh, go to the website and register your place absolutely free. www.stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thank you.